Praise God. So we are going on today. We want to look at the first category of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. That is the gifts of revelation. That's where we are today. The gifts of revelation. Which are, number one, the word of wisdom. Number two, the word of knowledge. And number three, discerning of spirits. Now, those are the gifts of revelation. And if you have a question you ask, don't be left hanging. The reason why we are learning this is we need to understand them before we can ask God to pour his spirit upon the church. Do you know anointing without understanding produces foolish people? <laughs> yeah. We need to understand. Amen? We need to know these things. Anointing without knowledge produces crazy people. You find strange things happening in church. And then we say it is the Holy Ghost. Even if the Holy Ghost left and went away, <laughs> because he cannot endure some, some nonsense we see in church. That's why we need to learn these things before we start asking the Lord, pour your spirit. I know the Lord wants to pour his spirit upon the people. And I'm going to show you also how these gifts are activated, how they work in the church. Amen. So we need to understand and this is an opportunity for you to make sure you understand everything you need to understand about the gift of the Holy Spirit. So through this category of gift, gift of revelation, God reveals things to man that otherwise a man cannot know or a church would not know. I also need to remind you that it is through these gifts, all of them, the, the nine of them, that the Holy Spirit feeds his church. That's how he feeds the church. That's how he educates the church. That's how he strengthens the church. Did you know the church works like the body of a human being? Praise God. The body of a human being must be fed. And then the body of a human being must be united as one for it to function. So it is through this gift that the church feeds the, the church feeds, or the Lord strengthens, or causes growth to the body of Christ. Now, if these gifts are not functioning in the church, then you wonder what kind of a church we are. That's why we need to learn about these gifts, so that we can go somewhere with the Lord. Amen. So through this gift, God reveals things to man that a man would not know unless the Spirit reveals them. Now, when we talk about the gifts of revelation, a revelation means to expose or to reveal or to bring to the light or to make known something that is hidden. That's what revelation is. So we are dealing with gifts that reveal or expose or bring to the light things that are hidden. Amen. Now, if we have this gift of parading in the church, there are a lot of things that take us by surprise that are not supposed to take us by surprise. There are a lot of things that come up and confuse us that only if we allow the Holy Spirit to bring these gifts in our midst, we wouldn't have experienced them. Praise God. So the Holy Spirit, by the way, the Holy Spirit is the power that works within the church. He is everything to the church. He is the one who brings literally everything. The ministry of Jesus Christ to the church is effected in our midst by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. He shows us Jesus. So he reveals these things to us for the benefit of his body. Now we want to look at each one of them, each one of the three. 
Let's begin with word of wisdom. 1 Corinthians 12, 8. The word of wisdom. Now if you are writing, I told you the other time, don't write wisdom. It's the word of wisdom, it's not wisdom. 1 Corinthians 12. I believe that is found in verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. Now, by definition, word of wisdom is a tiny portion of God's total wisdom supernaturally imparted upon a believer for a specific purpose. Specific purpose means something that needs to be done at that time. <laughs> something that you need to know at that time <clears throat> and act on it. A tiny portion of God's total wisdom. Now, wisdom is God's. Study the book of Proverbs from the beginning and you find wisdom personified. God is wisdom himself. He has the total wisdom that is required. Or when it comes to the church through an act of the Holy Spirit, he brings a tiny portion of the needed wisdom by the church at that time to reveal things to the church that the church would not know unless the Holy Spirit moves in that way. This is an insight concerning the future. The word of wisdom is insight concerning the future. Most of us mistake that for prophecy. We think when God speaks or someone brings a message concerning the future, we take that to be prophecy. But it's not necessarily prophecy. It's very different as far as these gifts here are concerned. So it reveals an insight concerning the future, immediate future, or a long term. And then, along that word, he provides counsel. He gives counsel in connection with what he has spoken. He gives guidance or warning or instructions that should deliver us out of trouble and place you into a productive position. When the Lord speaks and reveals the future, he is preparing you or he's giving you instructions that will help you to be productive when that future comes or to save you when that future comes. It's a word of wisdom, not prophecy. Wisdom is directive or instructive. That is, it directs you or gives you instruction. By the way, whenever God speaks, he only gives instructions. God gives instructions and he expects you to obey them. Now, if you don't respond to them, you die. That is, you suffer. If you respond to those instructions, then you reap the harvest that he has for you. With the word of wisdom shows you the way out of something and the way into another. According to God's purpose. The word of wisdom reveals God's purpose for you at that time. And how to receive it. It might reveal what God wants done immediately. Or what he wants you to do as a long term thing. So it's not called wisdom, but a word of wisdom. Now, a word of wisdom involves a specific situation at that time. It's very specific. It's not somehow or maybe. The word of wisdom is very specific. Especially when he's talking about the future, something that is coming in the future. So a lot of us end up thinking it is 
uh, prophecy. But it is not prophecy. Let me give you some biblical examples on the word of wisdom. I'm going to give you several of them. And we will read them. So you can put them on the screen. Uh, first one. Joseph and his interpretation of dreams. Joseph and interpretation of dreams. Now, the, the interpretation of dreams is actually a word of wisdom. A gift of the word of wisdom. That's how you, you're able to interpret dreams. Because dreams may also uh, involve the future. Now, he interpreted dreams. The, Zake, no, Zake, he was not able to interpret. But when you go to Genesis 40, verse 8 to 13, can, can, can we read that? Genesis 40, verse 8 to 13. I believe here we have dreamers. If you are a dreamer, say amen. See your dreamers here negative. Not the negative. It can sound very bad. You are a dreamer. No. But kuna positive. Let's start it from verse 8. What happened? This was when Joseph was in prison. So the, 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 these people, servants of Pharaoh, were there with him. And they had a dream. They each had a dream. So they talked to, to Joseph, verse 8, and they said to him, We each have had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. Have you ever had a dream and there is no interpreter? Some of you here have dreams and there is no interpretation. You know? And you are wondering what exactly you saw. Now that does not mean every dream should be, should be interpreted. So Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded into its blossoms, shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup into Pharaoh's hand and Joseph said to him this is the interpretation of it the three days no the three branches are three days now within three days Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place and you will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler but remember me when it is well with you. And please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh. And get me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen. Now Sasa Amenza could plead on his behalf. Because he was very sure this guy is being restored. But you see that kind of interpretation that, David, that uh, Joseph gave to this man. It was actually word of wisdom. That was word of wisdom, something coming in the future that he gave this fellow. The uh, second one is Daniel interpreting dreams. That one you can check in the books of the book of Daniel. He started, I think, in chapter two. Uh, chapter two he interpreted dreams, and then later on, Daniel is an interpreter of dreams. That was a gift of word of wisdom coming to Daniel. Second Kings chapter eight. 2 Kings chapter 8 and verse 12. I want you to see how this thing works. Yes, daddy. <laughs> Second Kings 8 and verse 12. But I want you to read it from, uh, from verse 8. Look at from verse 8. And the king said to Hazel, now this was a different king, you know, not from Israel. Take a present in your hand and go to meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? This was a king of Syria. He was sick, but he had a relationship with Israel and uh, they were able to to talk 
and to consult the prophet of God, Elisha. So this time he was sick and he sent his servant. Go to the prophet. So Hazel went, verse 9, to meet him and took a present with him of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camel loads. And he came and stood before him and said, Your son ben Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to you, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? By the way, Mark there, verse, that verse, verse 9, how he went to see the prophet. He went with a lot of things, praise God. He went with gifts. You never appear, you never go to God's altar with nothing. Amen? I think we Pentecostals took on a tabiambaya. Do you know we are free and free indeed? No? Pentecostals, we are so free. <laughs> so free. The grace is so sufficient that we overlook a lot of things. This is a non-believer, a Syrian, who knew you cannot approach God's altar with nothing. Praise God. But see, see, we are so free. We are so free, my friend. Sometimes even demons wonder how free we are. <laughs> now look at verse 10. And Elisha said to him, look at that verse. Go say to him, you shall certainly recover. However, the Lord has shown me that he will surely die. Did Elisha send this man to lie? That's upon you now to think about. No, there are some questions in the Bible that are very hard to answer. Is the prophet telling him to go and lie? <laughs> so, the prophet is telling him he is going to die. Now, Elisha can see that. This fellow is going to die. But you tell him he is not going to die. But look at verse 11. Then he set his countenance, that is his face, in a stare until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. That is, Elisha started looking at Hazel. <clears throat> set his face on him, just looking at him. <clears throat> and he began, he began to weep. Now Hazel was not able to understand what was happening. Look at verse uh, 12. And Hazel said, why is my Lord weeping? He answered. Now Elisha answered. Because I know the evil that you will do to the children of Israel. Their strongholds you will set on fire. And their young men you will kill with a sword. And you will dash their children and rip open their women with child. That is pregnant women. He will cut their stomachs open. That's what the prophet saw. Verse 13, so Hazel said, look at the response of Hazel. But what is your servant? A dog? Or is it, am I a dog? <clears throat> so when the prophet spoke, the guy did not know. He did not even believe in what the prophet said. So he asked the prophet, am I a dog to do such a thing? <laughs> Elisha answered him, the Lord has shown me that you will become king of Assyria. Praise God. That's word of wisdom. That's word of wisdom. Revealing something about him. <clears throat> Number four. Lot. Genesis 19. The whole of Genesis 19. Lot was being warned to get out of Sodom. That was a word of wisdom brought by angels to that man. By the way, Lot was not as wicked as we think. Lot was not very wicked. He was not as wicked as we think, as much as he had his own messes. But that was a word of wisdom that he was given. Number five, how Paul was to suffer was also revealed in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16. Can you, can you put that on the screen? Those are just two verses. Acts 9, verse 16. Verse, verse 15 to 16. Word of wisdom. Are you there? Well, if you are there, say amen. amen. You can at least look at the screen. Eh? Verse 15. Look at verse 15. But the Lord said to him, this is the Lord speaking to a man, Ananias, 
not the Safira, not the husband of Safira. Eh? This is another Ananias. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel. He's talking about Paul. Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Praise God. That's word of wisdom coming to Ananias. So God can give you a word of wisdom and send you to somebody. Amen. Not only in church here. God can come to you, give you the spirit of God, give you a word of wisdom and tell you, go and tell so and so. You have to be prepared for such things. Some of you will not. And uh, I am very sure in this church, there are people that God has spoken to. God has given you a message, but you have never said it. You have kept quiet with it. You are waiting. You know, I don't know what you are waiting for. And then, when whatever you are given happens, you will tell people, Yo kitu nilikuwa ni meon. Sindio? Yo kitu mimi pia mungu alikuwa mefanya nini? I beg you, if it happens, don't speak like that. Because you are trying to tell people how rebellious you are. So just keep quiet with your rebellion. Amen? <laughs> if the Lord speaks, are you seeing what God is telling this man? Go and tell him there was need at that time. Amen? That word is the word that was supposed to get Paul or soul at that time out of the situation he was in and activate him towards the ministry that he was called for. If Ananias decided to keep quiet, Paul wouldn't have known where to go. Amen. He wouldn't have had any direction. But a message was given to release him into the calling that God had given him. When God speaks to you, go and deliver the message. Praise God. But I will tell you how to deliver it anyway. The sixth one, Paul and the letters, the letter that he wrote, he wrote to, no, no, to, first, to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, there is something Paul tells Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he says this, Now the Spirit expressly says, that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirit and doctrines of demons. That's a word of demon. Of, of, uh, that's a word of, not a word of demons. <laughs> that's a, a, a word of wisdom given to Paul concerning the future. To give a warning that doctrines of demons will be preached and will replace the word of God in many congregations. Of Christians or believers which is happening today amen is happening uh, the last one there are many others let me give you the last one Acts chapter 11 verse 28 Acts chapter 11 verse 28 praise God so that when it comes when it comes you will be ready to be used by the Lord. Verse 28. Then one of them, no, verse, from verse 27. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them, named Agabus, stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar, now, you can look at that, when Claudius Caesar reigned. Now, those, those, that's Roman history, you will find that. It just tells you this thing was true. It happened. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, after that one, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in, Jeru in Judea. Look at that. When the prophecy came, that's a word of wisdom, came to them, immediately they were also given instruction on what to do, on how to help the situation. Praise God. Now that is word of wisdom because word of wisdom gives you instructions on what to do in order to escape or in order to harvest the promise that God is giving. It's word of wisdom. 
which is very much needed in the church now. It in, gives instructions. Where do we go from here? Amen. And when you do not deliver, by the way, the Bible says this. If I, the Lord, speak to a watchman, no? No, he said if a, a watchman, if there's a watchman in the city, you know, watchmen used to stand on watchtowers and they would look out for enemies. Now he says if a watchman sees the enemy coming and does not sound a warning to the city and the enemy comes in and invades the city and kills the people, the watchman will be responsible for the blood of those people. Praise God. Amen. Then he tells the prophet Ezekiel, you are my watchman. I have set you as a watchman over my people. If I give your word for my people to warn them, and you do not do that, so the enemy comes in, and they are killed, and they die. He says, they will die, yes, in their sin, in their rebellion, but I will require their blood from your hands, because I gave you a word for their salvation, but you refuse to speak it. Are you getting that? Because every word of wisdom that the Holy Spirit releases to the church or to a person is supposed to save a situation or to save the person. It's supposed to bring deliverance. Now, if you do not deliver that word, the enemy will come in and that person will be destroyed. Now, if they die, their blood is in your hands. Someone said, I don't remember which preacher said this many years ago. He said, there are people going to heaven with bloody hands. Yo mikono yiko na damu. We unaenda na damu ya nini? Ya watu. Na hapa unaimba, we are going to be dressed in white. Sindio? <laughs> Your dress is going to be stained with the blood of men. What are you going to pay? That is why when the Lord speaks, you have to preach it. Speak it. Pass on the message. Amen? You know, I have learned, if God gives me a word, I will speak it. Because I know, even if you get angry with me, you just get angry. But I will speak it. And I know you cannot stone me before I finish. You know, it's not possible. You try. You cannot stone me until I finish. Then you can. Now you are allowed to because the word of God has to be delivered. There are people who will go to heaven with people's blood in their hands. If God gives you a warning, he is warning me. And he uses you, he gives you that warning to bring to me. And you don't bring that warning to me. You are guilty of murder if I die. You are a murderer. Look at your neighbor, ask them, how many people have you murdered? You know? You are a murderer, I'm telling you. Some of, sometimes we try to make ourselves so humble. We hear things in the spirit and then you don't want to be. Or they will say, I am proud. Or they will say, I am what? So you keep quiet. You are a murderer. <laughs> what you see, you must speak. Amen. It's not your word. You are a vessel from heaven. God has sent you. Therefore, there should be no fear. Amen? <laughs> there should be no fear. Okay, number... Uh, let me give you a warning. Let me give you a warning as far as this gift is concerned. One, you should be sensitive regarding the timing or the context the place and who the revelation is being shared with. <clears throat> you should be sensitive. Of course, some of you, God gives you a message and you share with ten people before you go to the one you are supposed to give. You're new total. Say my amen. <laughs> Why should you share with ten people before you go to the other person, the person you are sent to? Go to the person and tell them. Amen. Now get this. You should be sensitive to I mean sensitive regarding the timing 
This is because some of us think that when the gift is released, it becomes so strong, so powerful, you cannot control it. No, that's what we think. Have you ever been in a place in a church where people start screaming and yelling and all these things, some fall down in order to give a word of knowledge? <laughs> or, or give a prophecy? Or speak something? Where people yell and scream and you ask them, I asked one lady who used to scream really and uh, groan like she was giving birth, you know, in order to prophesy. So I asked her one day, why do you do that? And she told me, you know, it's so powerful when it's coming out. <laughs> Let me tell you, every manifestation of a gift is under the control of the vessel. You as a person, you can control. Praise God. When the gift comes, you have the ability to control and to decide when to pass the message. It doesn't force you. Oh, it was so powerful, it came out by itself. No. Kama Corino, ndio wanze kurukaruka wende rao. Na useme mavitu mingi. No. You can decide. I can get a word now and keep quiet in the evening. I meet with you and we talk. I tell you this is what the Lord said. Praise God. That's a mature way of delivering the message. But immaturity is you will fall down, you will scream. Wanze kuita mutu. Wewe, toka hapo. Mungu wame kuambia. Mbele ya watu. Yo ni utoto. It's not a sin, new toto. <laughs> Praise God. Sometimes God can give you a word and you keep quiet, not out of rebellion, but because you can discern the, re the recipient of that word is not ready for it. So you keep quiet and wait and maybe pray to see whether the person uh, the Lord will prepare their heart for the word that you have to give them. Because there are people you can give a word to answer kukutukana. Especially what to people who are bitter. You go tell someone who is bitter that the Lord is saying your bitterness is going to kill you. What? <laughs> so sometimes you have to you have to weigh the situation and ask for wisdom. But it should not take long because they will die before they receive the message. So you have to be sensitive regarding the timing. Amen. Amen. Number two. You must avoid allowing other people to develop dependency upon you. Now those of you who have the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of wisdom, the Holy Spirit uses you in that way, there is always a danger of people developing dependency on you. In other words, you interpret a dream today, and then you, tomorrow you interpret another dream. The third day, somebody comes to you. Let me go to the interpreter of the dreams. And then, Soon after that, you open an office and you start a ministry of interpreting what? <laughs> Get this. No ministry should be started based on gifts. No ministry. No church should be started based on gifts. No ministry starts based on gifts. The fact that you have gifts does not mean you are called to start a church or to start a ministry. Gifts are for everyone in the church. Amen. Every member in the body of Christ. Right here. Each one of us here. You are supposed to be manifesting the gifts of the spirit. It's for us. It's not, for a, it's not a calling. Now we have a danger of those of us who may be having these giftings there is a danger of allowing people to develop dependency on you so that uh, every time they come to you for consultations. I dreamt yesterday kuna chura, 
Hiyo inamaanisha nini? There is nothing it means. It only means there was a chura kwa mlango. You know? <laughs> Beware especially of these people. I, I was watching another day on TV. I don't know which channel was this. But there's a man there with a certain program. You call him and tell him you are dream and he gives you an interpretation right there. You know? Or radio. Every time. Mimi niliota kuna nyoka imemeza paka. Eh hiyo inamaanisha kuna nyoka shetani anakuja kumeza mali yako. You know? <laughs> Mimi niliota kuna inzi wengi. <laughs> Funny dreams and he gives interpretation for each of them. Beware of the people who interpret everything. Most of them are con men. Amen. So don't be running to people who interpret this. But at the same time, there are people who interpret dreams and you can go to them. Amen. But you have to discern in the spirit who you are going to. Now the warning I'm giving here is you as a believer, be careful so that you do not make people depend on you for interpretations. Be careful. There is a brother many years ago, I think that time, I was still young. I was in Christian church. And there was a, a brother who came up with a story that he was abducted by two ladies. Put in a car around 10 p.m. And was taken to a certain cave near Ndarugo where he found uh, Satanists there and many captives that uh, the devil had captured and put in there. And he saw many things. And somehow God delivered him, got him out. That was his story anyway. And uh, so he came. He was very scared. And for a long time, he was talking to us. He would, uh, and the only thing he would express and emphasize on was, Kuna wasichana wawili. No? Kuna wasichana wawili thika. Kuna wasichana wawili kwa gari. So mpaka kaitu wa njoroge wa wasichana wawili. You know? That's what he used to. But then, he started giving people revelations that according to him, he got when he was in that cave where he was taken by the two ladies. And talking about uh, things like dreams and things like that. And finally, he established himself as an interpreter of dreams. And people started going to him for dreams and interpretation and all these and a lot of things and finally in the end it was found out he was such a con man. So be very careful. Don't allow people when people depend on you for interpretations they create pressure. So you start finding what? You know when you come to me I would not want to tell you I don't know. Sindio. So I start looking for my own interpretation because I'm ashamed to tell you I don't know. There was a time I taught on prophetic signs, not here, but who could think to in one church. Prophetic signs, dreams, and uh, the meaning of numbers and how you can use them, uh, the meaning of numbers, animals, and how you can use them to interpret a vision or a dream. I taught that. I've never taught that in heaven's gate. After I did that, people started coming. Mimi niliona ngombe. Namanisha nini? No, mimi niliona nini? Nilikuwa nikilala, nikaona panya. Nilikuwa nikilala, nikaona nini? People started coming. I told them I don't know. You know? <laughs> you come to me with that. I don't know. Another lady found me. Akaniambia, I was standing somewhere. And I saw you passing. And you are very busy. You are so busy. And in a hurry, going somewhere. But I was standing somewhere at a certain wall, just looking at you and wondering why you are that busy. Uh, so, unafikiria yu inamaanisha nini? So, I told her, sasa, wewe, ulifanya, uliona nikifanya nini? Uliona nikiwa busy? Yes, you are very busy. Na wewe ulikuwa unafanya nini? Ulikuwa mesimama mes tu hivi. What were you doing? Nothing. Then you are the problem. So go interpret your own dreams. I was busy doing my own things. Get busy. You know? 
Don't allow people to develop dependency on you. The devil will come and will bring an, a fake interpretation. And that's how these messages and ministries and churches where they always talk about prophecy and all these things, that's how they developed. Out of this lie and the pressure of giving an answer to everything. If you come to me and I do not know, I will tell you I don't know. I can interpret dreams, yes, but not every dream. Praise God. So if I don't know, I don't feel the pressure of telling you I don't know. You don't know everything. Tell your neighbor that. You don't know everything. Number three, watch against pride. I'm anointed to interpret dreams. Sasa kama preacher, unaweka kwa poster, unasema... Yes, uh, Pastor Caleb, anointed to interpret dreams. Bring all your dreams, and I will interpret for you. That's, you go and you, my friend. Number four, don't call yourself a prophet. Don't call yourself a prophet just because unapata a few words of wisdom here and there that you don't even understand. You even think they are prophecy and they are not prophecies. So you start calling yourself prophet so and so. The other day I was watching, you know, YouTube you mambo, my friend. YouTube you gonna tuvitu. I wanna ma prophecy ya Kenya, kama sasa tunaenda election, eh? By the way, who are you voting for? I know who I'm voting for. I know who I'm voting for and he's the only person speaking the truth. Now you know who speaks the truth, okay? <laughs> I know who I'm voting for. He's the only fellow speaking the truth. All the rest are liars, okay? <laughs> and who you, who you, who you, who you, who But you look at YouTube, my friend. I saw in my dream, so and so, man. So people are prophesying and putting them on YouTube in the name of Jesus. And those prophecies are not together. They are different. <laughs> the Lord showed me Niruto. Another one, the Lord showed me Ni Raila. In the name of Jesus. Eh? Another one, the Lord showed me Akuna Nisijaona moja kisema wajakoya. When you put these things together, you can read a spirit of lies <laughs> in them. Do not call yourself a prophet just because you pass on messages, a word of wisdom or word of knowledge or prophecy. Praise God. Number five, do not make mistakes the mistake now, now do not mistake your own positive thoughts and feelings for a word of wisdom unajua kuna vile unafikiria anga si ndio yeah kuna vile unafikiria na vile unataka mambo ikue do not think that that is word of wisdom you have to be sure this is the holy spirit speaking to me amen now the holy spirit when he speaks the gift will override your thinking you are your own thoughts, your personal thoughts, you will realize that what has come to me is not of me. This is different from me. This is like something dropped in my spirit. It's not a product of my own thoughts. Amen. You will be able to tell that. So do not mistake your own positive thoughts. By the way, if you are not sure, just say, I feel. Amen. You can come to me and tell me, I feel. I sense in my spirit. Don't say the Lord told me. The Lord told me. Like some of you young men who you want to get married, so you go to a lady and you say the Lord told me. Never use those words. Unaskia. Sutao awe. Never go to a lady like that. The Lord told me. Ukimwambia the Lord told me, what do you want her to do? Do you know if you tell me the Lord told you to tell me, 
you have even denied me the opportunity to pray about it. You know, I can't pray about it. How do I go to pray about what the Lord has said? I'm supposed to obey. So if you tell the lady, a lady, the Lord told me you are going to be my wife, then the only thing she is supposed to do is, yes, sir. <laughs> She's not supposed to do anything else about it. So if you are not sure it's the Lord, don't say the Lord told me. Just say, I feel. In that way, you are giving someone an opportunity to pray about it and also to test the spirit. Praise God. Yeah, I think that's word of that's word of wisdom. Let's look at the second one. Word of knowledge. The word of knowledge. If you have a question in those ones, you can still ask. The word of knowledge is still there in verse 8 to another. One to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit to another word of knowledge through the same spirit to another word of knowledge. Now, word of knowledge is a tiny portion of God's total knowledge regarding the present or the past, not the future, the present or the past. A tiny portion of God's total knowledge supernaturally imparted upon a believer regarding the present or the past. <laughs> By the way, who wrote the book of Genesis? Who wrote the book of Genesis? Who wrote the book of, Mo of Genesis? Moses. Okay, in the Bible, in which book is Moses born? Okay. Where is the record of the birth of Moses? In which book? Okay. <laughs> no. In which book is the record of the birth of Moses? <laughs> and then in Vizuri. And then in Vizuri uko. Moses wrote the book of Genesis, but the story of his birth is in Exodus. So how did he write those things? Where did he get that from? How did he write about the Garden of Eden? How did he record, write to us about Adam and about Eve and all those things that happened? It is called word of knowledge. It's a revelation of the word of knowledge that the Lord gave him about the beginnings. So Moses recorded all those things under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And that's how he was able to write those things. So the word of knowledge is something regarding the past or the present that is supernaturally revealed. To you by the Holy Spirit. So it involves as a fact that is existing or is past. And it might involve a person, a thing, a condition, or an event. Praise God. So this is only a portion, by the way, I am emphasizing that, only a small portion of God's total what? Knowledge about the present or the past. Now these things happen. For example, you can be here, standing here and say there's someone here with a headache. Sindio, that's word of knowledge. That's not prophecy. That's word of knowledge. There is someone here who is depressed. That is word of knowledge and of course whenever it is revealed it is because there is grace to deal with it at that time amen that's why when god speaks something like that you need to speak it out because grace is being released at that time 
as you speak the word, grace is being released. So when the person hears what you are saying, and they respond and they say, yes, that is me, the grace comes in for their healing. Amen? Now, if you don't speak, you are denying someone an opportunity to get their healing. Praise God. Now, this does not make you a teacher. That gift does not make you a teacher. You are only receiving a revelation of something or an existing fact among the people. It doesn't make you a teacher. It's not something you can force. This is not something you learn from school. No. You don't know everything. Some of us, God gives you a few words of knowledge here and there and then all of a sudden you become a teacher uh, uh, teaching people on what word of knowledge is or what prophecy is. Do not take that direction. Now knowledge is informative and is always connected with meeting a particular need at that time. The word of knowledge just gives you information about an existing fact among the people of God. And that's a gift that we need because many times we have people in our midst who are going through things and they do not want to speak about them. And we need the Holy Spirit to move in our midst always to bring out these things to the light. Amen. So it may be a sickness. It may be war somewhere. It may be some struggles somewhere. It may be some satanic attack somewhere. Or some hidden things going on in the church that are not supposed to be there, or even that which is supposed to be there. It's not always about something that is bad. It is whether things are good or bad. It takes the word of knowledge to reveal them. Praise God. Now, the word of knowledge helps the church, the ministry within the church, to be accurate and effective. You can imagine we come to church and we are always, we are preaching to sick people and we can't even tell people are sick. We are coming, we are preaching to, to people who are confused and we cannot even tell people are confused. So the word of knowledge helps us to minister with accuracy and effectiveness. And it brings encouragement. When the word of knowledge is released, it brings encouragement because the Spirit of God will act on it right there, by the way. If a word of knowledge comes right now because of a sickness, then it is going to be healed right there. Not tomorrow, not the next day. The grace is there to deal with it right there. Or it discloses sin. And supernaturally reveal other needs that may be existing within the body. Now, the word of knowledge always works together with the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge comes always with the word of wisdom. That is, when a word of knowledge is released now, for example, the Lord tells me now, there's someone here with a headache. Now, I need immediately a move of the Holy Spirit in my life to give me a word of wisdom on what to do with it. What, what do I do with that? Now I know there's a sick person in the service. What do I do with it? I need a word of wisdom to tell me what to do with it. Praise God. So they work together. You cannot have word of knowledge and not have word of wisdom. The word of wisdom can either come through me who saw it or through another person. Praise God. Are we together? First Kings 19. First Kings 19. The story of Elijah when he was telling God, I am the only one. And the Lord tells him, there are seven other, seven, seven thousand prophets of mine who are right here in this city. People that I have preserved for myself. Elijah always thought he was the only one. And then God tells him, you're not the only one. Praise God. Can you imagine how humiliating that is? You think you're the only one? <laughs> Praise God. Now, 
Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6 verse 8 to 12. You can write that so that we don't read because of time. Second Kings chapter 6 verse 8 to 12. Elisha the prophet knew what the king of Syria was planning in his bedroom. That was a word of knowledge. Praise, of, praise God. You know? And may, my friend, may this gift be released in our midst so that we can know what you are doing in your bedroom. No? <laughs> Praise God. And I'm telling you, when, what the danger with this gift is that people will run away from church. <laughs> and imagine every, every time you come here, you come here, you know? The next time we meet, you want to run away. That, you know? And that happened. We have to be very careful, those who have the word of knowledge, because you can use it to scatter instead of bringing people together. John chapter 1, verse 47 to 48. Jesus and Nathaniel. The story of Jesus and Nathaniel. The story of Jesus and uh, the Samaritan woman, John chapter 4, when Jesus is telling the Samaritan woman, you know you have had six, no? yeah. six husbands, <laughs> that was word of knowledge, Act chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, I just give you these things so that you go and read them because of time, to your own time. Peter and Ananias. I want this one back, by the way. E. E. Do you know one time I asked the Lord, Kwa nini watu wakufi siku hizi? Ilikuwa mene sumbua. Why are people not dying when we are lying in church? Why are they not dying? I don't know God is good. He always answers when you ask him some question, even if it is stupid sometimes. So he asked me, what will kill them? <laughs> and what, what will kill them? He said, if I am there, they will die. Are you getting that? I'm wondering whether you are getting what I'm talking about. <laughs> if I am there, they will still die anyway. But they are not dying because I'm not there. Hmm? Strange. But can you imagine Ananias and Sapphira? coming to worship the Lord, knowing what they have done. <laughs> that lying spirit. And Peter tells them, you have not lied to man. Amen. How many of us come to church to lie to the Holy Spirit in the name of lying to man? So you don't speak the truth. <laughs> and you think you're hiding against a man. Peter revealed to the church that day that these things we do in the church, which we are not supposed to do, are actually being done against the Lord, not against man. So why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? And he died. Now that was a word of knowledge. Praise God. A warning. Warning with the word of knowledge. It will always, it must always agree with the word of God. Always. A gift or a manifestation of the spirit of God must be in line with the written word of God. If it does not agree with what is written in the Bible, that thing is of the devil. Doesn't matter who speaks it. So everything must be checked against the scripture. Don't just take things and say, oh yo, yes, yes, the preacher said he's a great man of God. No. It must always agree with the written word of God. Amen? Amen? Now, if you have a gift of the word of knowledge, it does not mean you should not spend your time learning and studying and hearing the word of God. No. Spend time learning. Study. Amen? Amen. Read the word of God. Does not mean, the gift does not cover for studying the scriptures. You need to study scripture. You know, 
too much praying, in fact write this, too much praying without a real commitment to the five methods of scripture intake. You know, the five methods of scripture intake. Too much praying without a commitment to the five methods of scripture intake creates a dangerous imbalance. You know, there are people who are always there. They always, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, but you don't read the Bible. You know, you don't study the Bible. Prayer and studying the Bible must go together. Because if you don't, demons will come and start speaking to you things that are not from the Bible. And you will think God is speaking. This is how people lose direction. We want to pray and fast, pray, fast, pray, fast, but we are not studying the scripture. The next thing the devil begins to tell you, you know you need to go and uh, start a church. Because now you are anointed. Witchcraft. Praise God. Kuna kitu inaitwa familiar spirit. Do you know familiar spirit? Familiar spirit is a spirit that counterfeits. Now, I, I remember when I was giving you these things, I told you all the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be counterfeited. Are you getting it? Now, a familiar spirit is the spirit that counterfeits these gifts of revelation. He will always come like an angel of light. And especially when you are not grounded uh, on the scriptures. If you don't study the Bible, by the way, what's the five methods? The five methods of scripture intake is what? Read, listen, study, memorize, and meditate. Praise God. That's the life of a Christian. Read the word. Study the word. Meditate on the word. Memorize the word. And do what? Listen to the word. That's how we take the scripture. If you do not spend your time there, and you give your time in prayer and fasting, we are looking for a witch in the making. You find people every time, have you read the word of God? You study the word of God? No, I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit to speak to me. Umebakisha tu a few steps to a witch. Are we together? Yeah, so believers, we, need, but we are being deceived because we don't study the scriptures. We don't. I found a man, Kambiti. Munajua Kambiti? My friend, Peter Kambiti, if you look at it in the eye of the spirit, you can tell kuna witchcraft in that area. Kambiti is funny. I found a man there who decided to make himself a prophet. And the first thing, in his first prophecy was, the time for the Bible is over. And God has commanded me to write a new book. I found that man with full scabs, my friend. Men. He was writing a new Bible. <laughs> he said he's a prophet, and a prophet needs a servant. So he went and took another boy somewhere, and he made him his servant. Found the two of them sitting there. I am writing the word of God. This is the new Bible. Where do you think that thing came from? Too much spirituality without what? The what? And then we have fellows who, anyway. <laughs> well, here, yeah, God told me, God told me, God told me. But when you examine from the scripture, you realize, Yo kitu mungu amesema does not agree with what they are saying, with the, with the written word. A church, Pefa church in Lamu. I found church confused, scattered. Why? Because the pastor invited a prophetess from Mary. The prophetess went. Uh, but get this. No gift is greater than the written word. No gift. No gift should be listened to more than the written word. 
So the prophetess went and for one week, I think two weeks, she preached and prophesied, gave different kinds of prophecy. And then after her season was over, with the time she was given by the pastor, she refused to leave the church. She went on prophesying. And you know, people are crazy. People started believing her more than they believed their pastor. Can you imagine that? Mutu amekuja hapo chachienu kuubiri, then you start believing them more than your pastor. Tell your neighbor something is wrong with your head. <laughs> How? Because of prophecy. The pastor does not prophesy. The pastor has no word of knowledge. He only preaches. And people are thirsty for prophecy. Do you know by the time we arrived in Lamu that time, some years ago, that's many, that's many years ago. The pastor ran away from the church. Can you imagine the pastor himself ran away? <laughs> so I found some brothers who had been sent there as missionaries. They were very confused. And they told us <clears throat> when she ran away, when the prophetess ran away, she left another Bible for them. She wrote script, Unajua kama letters of Paul. She wrote her letters, Akasema. Uh, these ones in the Bible, the letters of Paul, the Bible, Zimeisha, Sasa Mungu Ameni instruct ni and new ones, and this is what you will be reading and studying in this church. And then she left. Gifts can go overboard if not checked. Praise God. So be careful how you use them. God told me, God told me. Another sister came to me. <clears throat> no, I'm telling you I've heard things. A lady came to me. Very good. We were in another church at that time, not here in Heaven's Gate. She was a good intercessor, whatever. Spent most of her time in intercession. And one of the days she comes to me and tells me, God spoke to me and showed me my husband. I ask her, who is your husband? The one she told me is, was a sinner. So God told you to marry a sinner? Yes, God told me to marry that sinner. Told me that sinner is my husband, and after we get married, I will lead him to salvation. So God told you to take bread and turn it, take stone, take a stone and change it into what? into bread and eat it. <laughs> now that's a lady who spent most of her time in intercession. Sometimes, I'm very careful by the way with these intercessors. Maybe. No? But it does not mean there is no intercession. Intercession is there. Amen. And I am trusting God to raise intercessors in this church because at Amukito for intercession you don't come. God bless you. Are we together? Are you getting me? But you see, a lady got so much in the spirit that she started hearing she needs to marry what? A sinner. Now, if you are saved and you hear in the spirit you need to marry a sinner, you have a demon. <laughs> Say amen to that. Amen. Unless you are hoping so. <laughs> but if you got married to someone who is not saved. You got saved after marriage. So you are saved and your spouse is not saved. That's okay. Stay there. You don't leave. If you leave, you have a demon. <laughs> are you getting me? Because there are people who get saved. I, I know a lady. I met a lady. God called her into ministry. She told me. And I saw what she was doing. In fact, she started a church. And then she started telling me, with all the anointing, I don't think I can have a husband who is not saved. She was saved. She was married. <laughs> so I don't need a husband who is not saved. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. When it's temple of Satan. Do, who do you think was more satanic than that? That lady was more satanic than her unsaved husband. And do you know she literally chased that man away? 
because he was not saved. And then she got into spirituality, touching God, prayer, fasting, you know, exploring spirituality without an authority. You know, the husband is an authority. <clears throat> Did you know that? By the way, hear me, you ladies who are married, your husband is your authority. Hata kama ni your crook. Sema amen. Oh, amutaki kusema, let me repeat. Your husband is your authority. Say amen. Okay, sema again. <laughs> your husband is your covering. And you, have, you cannot bypass your husband to go to Jesus to give you a cover. Jesus is not your husband. You are a witch. <laughs> what are you talking about? It is the same Jesus who has given, you, given your husband authority over you. And you cannot explore spirituality without submission. You can't. There is order. Amen. Don't attempt some things, my friend. You have to, or as much as he may not be saved, he may not know anything to do with the Bible. Before you attempt spiritual things, submit. Make sure you pick a chai and a uji. Vizuri, before you go for your prayer and fasting. You have a devil. Are you hearing me? You people. There's nothing. You cannot. Even the pastor is not your authority before your husband. Pastor, we are a man of God. <laughs> your man of God is that drunkard. Kuna, to me, you know, sometimes you want to listen to the pastor more than you listen to. Let me tell you how a pastor becomes your authority. Your pastor becomes an authority as a family. You as a family, you submit to what? To a pastor. Praise God. Lakini siyo wewe umeponyoka huko ati kwa sababu. To your husband, huyu mtu wa sikiangi mungu, huyu. Chene ende kwa pastor ni wakile mkono. Huyu usikuje kwa angu if you are against your husband. Don't. Don't come. Stucky, I don't want to be bewitched, my friend. Stucky. Amen. Amen. Are you getting me? Yes. <laughs> so, as long there must be honor, the principle of honor works in the kingdom of God. Mm. Honor your authority, honor your parents, then you can go for a blessing to your pastor. Amen. Mm. Yeah. So, those things must be there. Mm. Let Ali Fukuza, now, what I wanted to say is this. See, Ali Fukuza's husband, mm. ministry. she went mad. He's a lady I know. She went mad, literally mad. She had no authority. There was no cover. Demons came. She became mad. Akansa kuona demons everywhere. Beware, people see demons everywhere. She went to her house. The blankets had demons. The mattresses had demons. She removed all of them, took them out and burnt everything. Because they have demons. Do you chase demons by burning things? Strange things. So you have to submit to an authority. Amen? Be careful. So where was I now? <laughs> now, word of knowledge. Another warning. This gift should not be used to establish a doctrine. Or ministry. Bukona ministry a word of knowledge. Hakuna kitu kama yo. There's nothing like a gift of word of knowledge. Uh, no, a ministry of word of knowledge. Ministry yako always ni wewe unambianga watu uh, naona mutu hapa. Ministry yako imebesiwa na hiyo. It's based there. 
When people come to church, ninasikia mtu hapa. Mungu ananionyesha kuna mtu hapa. You don't start a church based on those things. In fact, those are things that should be done among the members. Amen. Hey, quickly, let me go <laughs> quickly malize hiyo. Ikiwa uko na swali, unaweza kunipata kwa office, ndio? Yeah. Let's go to the last one and then we finish discerning of spirit. Remember I'm not exhausting everything. I'm giving you room if you need discussion on that you can see me in the office or if you put it in the WhatsApp group I will answer. Discerning of spirit. Hii another one inasumbua. Discerning of spirit is a supernatural revelation from God concerning the activities of the spirit world. Remember, it is not discernment. It's not discernment. It's discerning of spirit. Now, let me show you how discernment is acquired. Not discerning of spirit. Hebrews 5, verse 12 to 14. Hebrews 5, verse 12 to 14 says this. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Those who by reason of use practicing obedience to the word of God. Amen? That's the reason of use. By use, practical obedience to the scripture produces maturity in the faith. Amen? Now, discernment comes through a process of maturity. Spiritual maturity by practical obedience of the word of God. So you get discernment. But discerning of spirits has nothing to do with spiritual maturity. It's just a gift released by the Holy Spirit to any immature or immature believer. Now, discerning of spirits here means an insight into the spiritual realms where you see angels or you see demons or you can see human spirits or you can see the spirit of God. Now, discernment itself means the ability to be able to tell the difference between the holy and the unholy, the good and the bad, the right and the wrong. That's discernment. But discerning of spirits is an insight into the spiritual realms. You can see demons. Now, there are many demons right here, Sahi. If God opens your eyes to see them, that's discerning. That's a discerning there's a gift being released for you to be able to to see what's happening or to understand what's happening it's a seeing into the spirit world and being able to tell the difference that is I can see a demon you know the bible says a demon or the devil can change like to be like an angel of light now discerning means I can see an angel and be able to tell whether this is a demon that has made himself like an angel of light or it is truly the spirit of God. You can tell the difference because most of the time uh, we have a lot of demonic activities and then we think it is the Lord who is doing it. Now we can be able to tell discernment, the discerning of the spirits here means right now if you have discerning of spirit and the Lord opens your eyes in the spirit to see me, you can tell the spirit I am using to preach to you right now. You can tell whether what, I'm, what is on me is the spirit of the devil or the spirit of God. And you need that because it will help you to know who to follow and who not to follow. Praise God. So the gift also reveals if you see a demon, you will be able to tell the nature of that demon. What kind of a demon that is. 
Or if it's an angel, what the angel is carrying for you. You can even tell how many they are. Discerning of spirits can also help you to see the motives and attitudes of people. You can tell a motive or attitude of people. You can look at someone like this and you know. You can tell what their motive is. You can tell what their attitude is when it comes to what they are doing. And I think we need that one here. Sindio, do you agree with me? <laughs> now, discerning of spirit is not mind reading. It's not reading people's minds. It's not some psychological insight or being judgmental or critical. Because people, you know, people have problems with people, Cindy. You know, people always have problems with people. And many times when you have problems with people, you can discern in quotes, Cindy. <laughs> so the problem you have with people can help you to discern whatever you are thinking. And that's not the spirit of God. So you have to put a difference between mind reading and the revelation of the spirit of God. Now this spirit, this gift protects the church against wicked spirits and doctrines of devils. We need this gift in the church today because it will protect us from wicked spirits and doctrines of devils. Especially in Kenya, right now, we have a lot of wicked doctrines that are getting into Kenya through Nigeria. We need the spirit of God to release upon us these gifts so that we know which is the right spirit and which one is the wrong spirit. This is necessary. Amen. Upon us as the people of God. Now, discerning of spirits can occur as one, a vision. A vision. I mean open vision. You will know the dif I will tell you the difference. Kuna open vision na kuna a dream. Open vision means you see something in the spiritual world when you are asleep, when you are awake, like now. You are here, seated here. And then your eyes are open and you see in the spirit. That's called open vision. You in Guinea, a dream or a vision, if you come umelala, is what you may call a dream or a vision, but you're seeing that when you're sleeping. Now, not all dreams are acceptable, not all dreams are good, not all dreams are meaningful. You can also discern through an audible voice. You hear a voice. You can be here and you hear a very loud voice and you're the only one hearing it. Nobody else is hearing it. Only you. An audible voice. Discerning of spirit can also, escape, can also come as an inward revelation by the Holy Spirit. It's just a knowing, a knowing. I don't know how to explain that. You didn't know something and suddenly it is there. Now you know it. You know? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You didn't know and suddenly you know it. It just came. It's like you are in darkness in a room. Uh, a dark room and then someone just comes and switches on the light and you start seeing something you're not seeing. That happens. An inward revelation. The other way you can discern is through smelling. Smelling. A smell. You know demons smell. Did you know that? Demons have a smell. There's a smell that is demonic. It is as what do you call? Do you say a bitter smell? Lamaninini? Kasmel kako setani. Don't know how to explain it. It's funny. But you can smell. You can be here and you just a smell. If it too, unaanza kuangalia rao. Ninini yoi menuka hapa hivi. Na uoni. Na nika pepo kako hapa next to you. You know? <laughs> yeah, they smell. Demons have a funny smell. Do you know God also has a smell? A sweet smell. 
I will teach you about the anointing oil so that we get to know what it means. But you see the mixture that was there in the anointing oil. It had a smell that nobody knew. The aroma in it. Nobody had ever smelled it before. It shows you the, the, the aroma of God. When God is present, a, a sweet smell is different from perfume. Yesterday I was talking to a brother. Here, he came to my office and he felt it. He told me he was sleeping at Kashindo and Nani Ameweka perfume kwa room, kwa, kwa bed sheets. And then he realized he never uses such kind of a perfume. And the, the, the bedroom was covered with perfume. And then uh, he went, he decided to go to the toilet and he found the perfume there. So he went to the living room and it was there. I was wondering, where did this thing come from? So he started wondering, what is this? And he called a few friends, and they all those friends, all of them told him, you are in the atmosphere of heaven. And heaven is visiting you. There is a scent that heaven releases. Praise God. Now, that is a discerning of spirits, an insight in the spiritual. It can come through smelling. Uh, the other way is a physical presence where a demon literally appears or an angel literally appears. That can happen. And you know, as I teach you these things, personally, I believe that they should be happening in this church. In fact, that's why I'm teaching. Amen? Now, lastly, you can discern by interpreting a behavior someone's behavior or attitude or reaction. You can look at someone's attitude like this and you know this is a demon. He. And I see that many times, by the way. Many times. <clears throat> there are things, these gifts of revelation happen a lot with me when I'm preaching. Uh, many, many times I will talk things alafu mutu ananiambia nilikuwa nimemuubiri. You know? And I feel good when people tell me that, that you are talking about me. I feel good. Of course, I know I was not talking about them. But the truth is, when you are coming here, who did you expect me to talk about? Seriously. Ukikuja hii church. kuja ubiriwe. Did you expect me to tell you about Turukana? Watu wa Turukana? Oh, watu wa Turukana wa nguo. Did you expect me to say that? You came here because you need to be talked to about you. And that's what I'm doing. Now that happens many times. And I've had that problem. People, oh, you are talking mutu wale kuambia, ama muingina anaendea kumuingine. Wewe alisema hivyo kwa sababu ulienda ukafanya nini? Ukamuambia. Ukigongu wa gongeka, my friend. Watch a story mingi. Ha? Yeah? Praise God. Amen. That happened. There is a brother who was uh, up at two heavens gate. I don't know, but not this one. I think he was still on the other side. And uh, when I was preaching, I told somebody about a, a boil. I talked about you you ate your tithe, and that's why you have a boil here. And he had a boil there, and he had taken, he had eaten his tithe. <laughs> Serious. It just happened. Just word of knowledge. You're designing of spirits. You can look at somebody's whatever. Ata saain na ongea na njini. Kuna watu I can see. They are spirit. So anze ni kujiuliza kama wakina disciples. Ni mimi. Is it I? Is it I? Kuna spirits I see. The other day I looked at one of you here. The other day. On a Sunday. Niki wapa. Wana tu. Hako. Iyo. Hako ka spirit hako. Okay. This gift is needed in the church. Amen. So let me tell you this. Let me give you the uh, examples in the Bible and then we close. I know it's our time. Eh? Yeah. It's our time. I'll give you some examples quickly. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 verse 9 is an example of discerning of spirit. Verse 9 says, But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he, he was some great one. 
Actually, that verse means, says, he claimed to be a mighty man of God, as we say today. Some great one. He was a messenger of God. That's what he had preached in Samaria. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Are you seeing that now? He was preaching. He was teaching them the word. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with sorcery for a long time. So peep, this man is a sorcerer, but people have believed him to be a man of God. You see? Now the Bible says, but when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Do you see this man says he got saved? So he started following, he also got baptized. But the story does not end there. Now he is in the kingdom, Sindio. He is now a brother. Let's continue reading. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When they laid hands on them, they received the Holy Spirit. Praise God. We all need to receive the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw, now look at verse 18, that brother, Sindio, the former witch, Sosara, Nalini, Siakokwa Kingdom Sai, Look at what happened. Somehow he didn't, he didn't receive the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them what? <laughs> he said this, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. You seeing that attitude? And I've created a boy be a shari. No. I. This man is supposed to be a brother now. Now he's offering money to be given a gift. Corruption in Lianza Kitam. Other than Kanisa. Other politicians were under Kanisa. Ni sasa wana pea na pesa ndio wapewe kura. Sindio. See how satanic the church has become. But Peter said to him. Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Don't look at it. Now, many of us are buying gifts from prophets in Kenya. Because we don't read the Bible. Aye, verse 21. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Are you seeing that? Repent, therefore, of this your wickedness and pray, God, if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see, you see that? I see, discerning. He can see in the spirit, the spirit of this man. I see that you are poisoned with bitterness and bound by iniquity. You see that? Looked at Simon. He was bound by sin. Poisoned in his heart by bitterness. Bitterness is a spirit. It's not like a feeling. <laughs> are you hearing me? Bitterness is a spirit. If you are bitter, you have a spirit in you. And it's not the spirit of God. One day the Lord showed me bitterness dripping like what? Poison. It was dripping. You know, nikama poison in a drip. And it was burning. Where, where it dripped, it was burning. You know, whatever it was dripping on. It was burning, being consumed. Pole pole. And he showed me that's bitterness. That's what I said. He showed me that's bitterness in some people's hearts. And even here, if you are bitter, let me help you today. You have a spirit you need to be set free from. Amen. But well, some of you are so bitter. You can't even worship. I don't know you're so bitter. <laughs> so bitter that 
whatever gifts God has put in you are being consumed by that spirit. And you are wasting away pole pole. Pole pole to mambo inaisha to in your life. And you don't know. Because of bitterness. Inakulanga word to my friend. Utakuliwa. Ambia your neighbor even. Utakuliwa. This thing consumes. Utakonda. <laughs> Utakonda wish. With bitterness. Bitterness is a demon. It's not like a feeling. And imagine it's only conquered by forgiveness. Just that. Simple. But we are too proud to forgive. Just forgiving a person. But you are too bitter. You are so bitter. You are bitter with everything. Around you. Mpaka yinzi. The Lord help you. As I talk to you like that, it's because I'm seeing it. I see it. In this place, by the way, in this church. Iko. So repent, because you are not, somebody say it. I had that. And somebody, I think somebody wrote that. That those who are bitter, if you are bitter, it's like you are taking poison, hoping the other person is going to die. <laughs> you are taking poison, ule akufe. Kunyu watu, tuwane nani atakufa. We kunyu. I'm telling you we need this gift. Simon, brother Simon Magus. Simon Magus. Aya, on a brother muingine hapa. Matthew 16. Angalia tu. See the things that are happening in the house of God. Matthew 16. That's why we need discerning of spirit. May the Holy Spirit be released upon us. In Jesus name. Matthew 16, verse 23. Look at that. A brother called Peter. <laughs> okay. From verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Now, Jesus told the disciples that. Now, look at verse 22. A brother, ringleader. What did he do? Verse 22. Then Peter took him aside. Can you imagine Peter alishika yesu mkono? Akampeleka kando. And began to rebuke him. <laughs> Yet, I'm telling you this man. This man. This man was anointed by something. How do you rebuke Jesus? He took him aside, kuja. Ni kama kumushika mukono hivi, ebu kuja. After Jesus talked, enda kumushika mukono, ebu kuja, wewe, kuja. Kampeleka kando. At least alimpeleka kando. No? <laughs> and he gave Jesus a piece of his mind. Eh? He rebuked him, saying what? Fire be it from you, Lord. This shall not happen to you. Because Jesus said, I will be crucified. Peter said, no, it will not happen to you. Now, look at this. Verse 23 tells you who spoke. Who spoke? But he turned and said to Peter, that's Jesus, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. When Peter was talking, Jesus saw who was speaking. He saw behind Peter. Amen? That's discerning of spirits. He was able to tell. This thing telling me not to go to the cross is the devil. And you know, he sounds very good when he says, ah, I know I'm going to suffer and be crucified. And then someone tells you, no, you can avoid that. It sounds like a rescue. But the devil was there stopping Jesus from going to the cross using a believer. Peter, a believer. How many Christians speak by the spirit of the devil today? Praise God. Seeing in the spirit, Revelation chapter 1, you read it at your own time. 
That's John seeing in the spirit. That was discerning in the spirit. May the Lord give us back the spirit. Because we have a lot of satanic things happening in the house of God. That we may be able to tell the difference. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> four spirits. There are four kingly. Actually they are known as kingly spirits. And the Lord revealed to me. These are the spirits that are dominating the church circles. In this time. Let me give you the, those spirits. You will go and study about them. At your own time. Number one is the spirit of Balaam. The spirit of Balaam. There is a spirit. The power that was behind Balaam that time. That demon is back in our time. You know Balaam who and the things he did. The doctrine of Balaam. In fact you find Balaam in a church in the book of Revelation. One of those churches. I don't remember which one. One of the seven churches. Chapter 2 and chapter 3 of Revelation. There is a church that had the spirit of Balaam ruling it. That spirit has come back to our time. Balaam, the prophet who prophesied for money, for profit. He is pursuing ministry, but ahead of him, what he is seeing is what he is going to get out of it. So people start churches, not because God has told them, but the spirit of Balaam. And the spirit of Balaam has a lot of other messes in it, other than money. You can study that at your own time. Uh, number two is the spirit of Jezebel. 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 Number three, Absalom. The spirit of Absalom. Now, all these things, I'm not really explaining what they are. You can go and study them at your own time. You will see. You can even go Google, ask yourself, what's the spirit of Absalom? Menda wangali. Ziko, squeeze Google. In fact, I think... You should start Googling well, you will die. <laughs> you know, everyone is trusting Google, isn't it? So Google, when, when, Google, when will I die? Those who have iPhone, kuna Siri. Hey Siri, when will I die? But I will try that niski at Aniambiani. Amen, Jemima. So Absalom spirit. And number four, there are three spirits that have united together. They are called Korah, Dethan, Abiram. Korah is the head. Korah is the head. You will find them there in the Bible. Those spirits are there in the Bible. You check, just go study those spirits. These are demonic spirits. Now those are the demons that were behind these people. So we know the name of a demon by the people they have possessed and they are using. Now those four spirits are troubling the church today. Now the church in Kenya, now, including us, these four spirits. And I saw them. In fact, was it today, the day, yesterday or the day before yesterday when I saw those spirits, how they are working? Now may God give you discerning of spirits to be able to see the activities of those demons and resist them. Because they are right there in our midst. Kwanzaa is Jezebel. Jezebel, my friend. He. Ndiyo metuletia she does But may God give us what? The power to stand and resist this spirit in your life. Amen. And I believe by myself, I am standing and taking my position as a minister of God. This spirit will not rule us. They will not. I refuse that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we will fight them with whatever. <laughs> we will fight fire by fire. <laughs> Somebody said that. We will fight fire by, fire by fire. These spirits will not rule this church, I'm telling you. Never. They will not. I refuse that in Jesus' name. But I pray that the Holy Ghost may be released upon us. 
Amen? I needed to say something, like any time you mention, about that, on how these spirits are activated, how the gifts are activated. But I think we should, we should say that next time, because of our time. But I pray, let's stand on our feet and just ask the Lord, let's ask the Lord uh, to move in our midst. Just ask the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Move in your life. Can you talk to the Holy Spirit? Just ask him to move in your life. Ask Jesus to move in your life. In the name of the Lord. Just open your mouth and talk to the Lord about it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let that be a prayer for all of us. Now it's those of us who that kind. Last time we talked about that rigidity. Rigidity among believers where you cannot allow the Holy Spirit. Your heart is not broken enough for the Holy Spirit to move in. Ask the Holy Spirit to move in your life. May the Lord open your eyes that are not seeing so that you start seeing. May the Lord break the, the, the hardness of your heart so that you can be broken enough to receive the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to the glory of God. Lord, I pray that by your spirit you may move in again into this church. In the name of the Lord, I pray that you may take back your church. This has been your church. This has been your house. I pray take back your church. Be the Lord in this church. Be the king in this church. Be the ruler in this church. Be the master in this church. In the name of Jesus, I open the doors of this church for you, Lord Jesus. I open the of this church for you in the name of Jesus and I welcome you in take over this church let your spirit rule this church let your spirit dominate this church in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that we may not be led by the flesh we may not be led by ourselves but we be led by the light of the word of God in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit Lord move again in our midst in Jesus name in Jesus name Oh God of heaven, I pray that we shall not be found in our flesh. We shall not be found in the realms of carnality in the name of Jesus. Where God cannot reach us, where God cannot speak to us. I pray move again in our midst in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord be glorified. I pray for every individual here. Lord you who has covered us with your feathers. You who have delivered us from evil. You have delivered us from the powers of darkness. I pray take over this church. Take over this church Holy Spirit. Let this church be a place for you to express yourself. In the name of Jesus. That it will be the mind of God in this church. And not the mind of a man. In the name of Jesus. Today I stand against the spirit of darkness. That spirit of Jezebel. That has tried to attack this church. I bind and rebuke it in Jesus name and I pray that the spirit of God may establish his throne. Lord Jesus reign in our midst. Reign in our midst. Reign in our midst Lord. Oh thank you Jesus. Reign Jesus.